Okay, so in this problem, we're told a centrifuge rotor has a moment of inertia of 4.25 times 10 to the minus 2 kilograms times meter squared. How much energy is required to bring it from rest to 9,750 revolutions per minute? So we can imagine we have this rotor here, and we know its inertia is this value. And we're trying to get the angular velocity, omega, to be equal to 9,750 RPM. So the way we're going to do this is basically uh, using the energy or the uh, rotational kinetic energy formula, which basically tells us uh, the rotational kinetic energy is equal to one half the inertia times omega squared. So basically it's saying how much energy is this going to take? So the change in the rotational kinetic energy is equal to one half inertia times omega final squared minus one half inertia omega initial squared uh, so we're trying to find out how much energy this is going to take right the change in it to get it from this to this and so initially it starts from zero so uh, this value would just be zero and then notice uh, right so to find the change in it you would do the final minus the initial but the inertia is just a constant and one half is a constant so you only have to do uh, the uh, angular velocity right you only have to subtract those two in this so we know it starts from zero initially. So really the change in it, or how much energy it's going to take, right? Because that's the change, is just one half inertia multiplied by the angular velocity squared, where the angular velocity is what we're trying to get it up to. So it's really just a matter of plugging it into this formula. So we really just want to basically plug in the values. Uh, but when we do this, we need to make sure it's the right units. You have to have this in radians per second when you plug it in you don't want it in uh, revolutions per minute. So you're gonna need to make that conversion. So let's go ahead and do that now. So you should know how to convert it, but I'll show you. So we have revolutions per minute, right? That's what RPM is. And we need it in radians per second. So starting with the revolutions to radians, you should know that uh, one revolution is equal to two pi radians. You can kind of imagine it like the unit circle all the way around is two pi. So one revolution is all the way around. So that's where the two pi radians comes from. And then to get it in seconds, we know one minute is the same as 60 seconds. So you put it on top so the minutes cancel, and then our units are gonna be radians per second. So let me plug this in. 9750 times two times pi, dividing by 60, you're gonna get 1021.018, we'll say radians per second uh, and then now we have it in the correct units so it's a matter of plugging it in we have one half times the inertia which is uh, 4.25 times 10 to the minus 2 times our 1 to 1 1.018 squared right so we're just plugging in our angular velocity omega and our inertia now that they're in the correct units we just have to plug it in and solve so we have 0.5 times each of these values. And when you do this, you should end up with an answer of 22152.6. Uh, obviously, we're talking about energy here, so it's in joules. Um, rounding this to a better value, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can say 2.2 times 10 to the 4 joules. Uh, but yeah, so... 1, 2, 3, 4. So yeah, 2.2 times 10 to the 4 joules. That's going to be how much energy it takes to get from uh, a 0 RPM to an RPM of that with this specific inertia. So uh, yeah, main takeaway is uh, the formula for the rotational kinetic energy and make sure you're in the correct units when you do it. Uh, but yeah, so 2.2 times 10 to the 4, uh, that's going to be your answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.